All right. Well, for everybody who's with us here this morning, you guys look wonderful. Welcome. Greetings to you. For those of you that are at home watching online, we appreciate you tuning in this morning. And today, I want to talk with you about how Jesus is the healer. How many of you believe that? That Jesus is here to heal us. You know, the Bible says that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And earlier, we prayed about that. Lord, that your presence and your power would be here today for the miraculous. Now, several years ago, I was in Hawaii. And you know, when you're in Hawaii, you definitely got to go try surfing, right? That's what they do in Hawaii. And so I went ahead and gave that a shot. I could tell you I wasn't very good at it. And it seemed like just about every wave that was coming through there, I was working frantically trying to catch waves only to fall off of it, fall off of the board. And as I'm looking around, I noticed there were people that seemed like they knew a whole lot more than I did. And they would just be sitting out there waiting and watching and looking. They weren't trying to catch every wave. They had the ability to discern the right one. And then they'd catch it and have a really great ride. How many of you know we don't want to just be trying to catch every wave that's out there? We want to recognize the waves that God is sending, okay? And so uh, churches are very notorious about, you know, just trying to catch whatever the latest fad is, trying to create waves. Surfers don't do that. They're not out there trying to make things happen, They're not out there trying to create waves. They just are patient, and they wait and recognize what's already coming, and they catch it. Now, I believe that one of the waves that Jesus wants to send through his church is the waves of healing. Amen? Does anybody else believe that? Hallelujah. And I believe that's very important for us because... Uh, As I mentioned earlier, outside, all around us, and even in this place, there's people that are dealing with brokenness, people dealing with sickness, disease, infirmities, mental illness, spiritual sickness. And you know, last week we talked about that, how Jesus is the Savior. And when I think about all the healing aspects of what Jesus does, I would definitely say the healing of the brokenness between us and God through salvation, receiving what Jesus did on the cross, that's definitely the most important one. Wouldn't you agree? Because think about it for a moment. Everybody that Jesus healed in the Bible, they eventually died. Everybody that Jesus fed, you know, did a miracle and fed them, they were eventually hungry again. But those who put their faith in Jesus Christ, this is something that lasts forever. But that doesn't change the fact that why we are here on earth, that Jesus is deeply interested in our pain, in our brokenness, in our sickness, in our disease, in our infirmities, and he wants to be a part of healing those things. Now, the Apostle Paul said something very interesting in Corinthians. He says these words right here. He says, I do not want you to be ignorant. Would you say ignorant with me? I do not want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. That's just another way of saying, hey, I want you to be aware of the waves that God is sending. I don't want you to be ignorant of that. I want you to be able to catch what God is doing. Now, how many of you know the devil totally wants you to be ignorant? You know why? Because he's a thief. He wants to rob you of what God wants to send. He wants us to be like the surfer who's out there and all the good waves are just going right under the board and crashing on the shore while he's missing the right. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to miss the waves that God is sending. But Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know about what God is sending. That he wants to send waves that would, waves of healing for our sickness, our disease, our infirmities, our brokenness, maybe even mental illness. What I'm saying is, no matter what you may be dealing with, Jesus cares and Jesus has you covered. Can we give Jesus applause for that? Church, would you say this with me? Jesus is the healer. Say it again. Jesus is the healer. 
Now, this is interesting. Did you know that Jesus, who is the healer, actually delegated his healing ministry to you and to me? You read Matthew 28, and you read about how Jesus gave his disciples. That's you and I. He gave his followers his ministry. Now, would you read in Matthew 10, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 10 with me? Let's read the underlines together. As you go, pause. Where are you guys going? We go everywhere. In a little bit, you're going to go out these doors and you're going to go to lunch. Some of you, you're going to go home and you're going to get a much-needed nap. You know, tomorrow you're going to get up, you're going to go to work. Listen, as you go, what? What's it say? Preach the message. The kingdom of heaven is near. And then what does he say? Heal the sick. Interesting. We tend to think that the healing ministry of Jesus, that's where we have to drag people to church for. Okay, that's where it happens. But this verse tells me that yes, it happens here, but really God wants his healing ministry to be happening wherever you go. As you go, heal the sick. Heal the sick. Pray for them. Contend for them. So when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, one of the things that he said, this is in the Lord's Prayer. Let's go ahead and put that one up there as well the Lord's Prayer. In it, he said, Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done, where? On earth as it is in heaven. In this prayer, what is he praying for? He's praying that what's happening in heaven would be realized here on earth. So I have some questions for you. How many people are sick in heaven or diseased or infirmed? or addicted? None of them. And so the Lord says that when we pray, let's pray that as it is in heaven, it would be here on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so one of the things we need to understand is this. First and foremost, Jesus Christ is the healer, but he ascended to heaven, and now he's entrusted his ministry to you and I. And this is why he says, as you go, preach the good news, heal the sick, do these things. Now, how many of you know there is power in the testimony? There's power in the testimony. What, what do we mean when we say a testimony? That's when somebody testifies. They tell the story of what God has done for them, how God has touched their lives. And a couple of weeks ago, something really wonderful happened. Jim. Jim came, and during, during the break time, he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, Pastor, can I share a testimony? I don't think you use that exact word, but that is essentially what you wanted to do. You wanted to testify what God did because Jim had come, his back was out, and God worked through Robert through what the Bible would call a word of knowledge. Robert sees um, uh, Jim, and he says, Jim, are, is your back out? And Jim goes, oh, yes, it is. And then Robert laid his hands on uh, Jim, prays for him, and Jim was healed right here, right during the worship. And so then he came and he testified. He told all of us about how Jesus healed him in the middle of worship. And I don't know about you, but me, just hearing that testimony caused my faith to rise. You know, we run into people all the time here on Sunday mornings at Breakfast Church or during the week and even sometimes in our services where people feel hopeless, people that are so stuck in their addiction they think they could never get free. And I'm going to ask if we could hear a really brief testimony from Bradley. Bradley, tell us just briefly about your story. First problem is brief. (laughs) <laughs> it's, a, it's a loaded loaded statement. Loaded. I mean, let's be real. Uh, until I was 48 years old, I was houseless, jobless, hopelessly addicted to meth and alcohol and many other things. And 
My whole life I'd been a believer. And you were homeless. You were homeless living in the back of a truck yeah. in northern Idaho. Yeah, where it's warm. Freezing your rear yeah. end off, okay? <laughs> I learned a couple things that winter. So, the, um, Bottom line, you can believe all you want, but until you choose to follow, we don't always see the blessing of healing. I am a healing in process continuously. It's a daily struggle sometimes to remain whole. But I know that my faith in him and my faith in, in this church family and in the people that I work with to all be in one accord, um, it's, it's tough. It's tough. You gave me a minute, right? Okay, so you did good, brother. Hey, before you go though, and this isn't—I'm not counting this against your minute. Trying to put this my is, elbow up. Now, I think this is awesome though, because I mean, you know this because you drive that hope van around yeah. and you see people who are hopeless. Yeah. And our neighbor Dion over here, who had shared with me, he lives in this trailer and he is hopeless. It appears like he is hopelessly addicted. Okay, and he says to me the other day. He says, Pastor Dave, I'm so sick of this, man. I, I, I'm tired of living like this, and I want to get off of this stuff. And I reminded him. I said, you know Bradley? I said, Bradley was in the same mess you're in. He was homeless. He was addicted. And now look at him. He drives around a hope van going to people and sharing the hope of what the power of God can do. And you know what happened to Dion? I don't know how he'll respond to that, but I did let him know you'd be knocking on his door today, okay? But I could see this. You know what? He had a glimmer of hope. That's exactly what the testimony does. It gives hope. It's like, wow, if Bradley can get free, maybe I can get free as well. And so we've heard about a physical healing over there. We heard, we heard how somebody got... Uh, delivered from their addiction right there. And uh, I'm always a little nervous about coming out here with a microphone. You can have a seat. Would you be my microphone runner? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. am going to go ask Dion where he got his trailer, though. <laughs> hey, who here has been healed? God has healed you of something. Somebody right here, raise your hand up high. Right there. Well, as most of you know, a year ago, almost a year ago, I had a kidney removed. And at one point, um, they had given me nine pints of blood and I was, I was not responding, it was getting ugly. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, am I, am I gonna die, am I dying? And he said, yeah, you are, very calmly. <laughs> and I go, well, what are you gonna do about that? <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm doing it right now. And I looked over to my left and as God is my witness, Jesus was sitting in a chair to the left of me, knitting. And I go, really, you're knitting at a time like this? And he goes, yeah. And I looked at the ball of string, and there was a bunch of gobbly words, but as he was knitting them onto the knitting needles, I saw the prayers of all the people that were praying. I mean, you could see, dear Lord, please help Sherry with, dear Lord, I mean, it blew my mind. So. I don't care if people believe me or not. I know what I saw. God healed you. Hey, Bradley, can you take it back to Linda back there? I was at Foursquare Convention, and um, they had a time of prayer. We, they invited anybody who needed prayer to go up front. And I went up front with Charlie. I, wasn't, I had a bad tooth. And it had been bothering me for a long time, and I was going to finally have to fix it. But I was up there, and I was mostly up there to support Charlie. And so I was standing there, and this man who's a prayer person comes up to me. And he puts his hands on both sides here. I mean, how did he know? And he prayed for me, and then he left. And I thought... Is there any, you know, is there, I couldn't tell whether or not, because it would only happen when I would eat. I could, it, you know, it hurt. And so I went back to my room. I tried a cookie. It, it didn't hurt. And I said, well, a cookie isn't very, you know, thick. So I tried something else. It didn't hurt. It, it, was, it was healed, totally healed. And it had been bothering me for, I don't know, months and months. So, Linda, are you still healed? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and move on. I know that we could have very, you know, many, many testimonies. For those of you that have been around here for a while, you know my story. I was sick for pushing two decades with a illness they call ulcerative colitis. How many of you have ever heard of that? An autoimmune disease. It's chronic. They don't have a cure for it. And actually, because of the inflamed colon, is it okay for me to talk about a colon, you guys? Is that okay? <laughs> I'd been sick for so long, it was actually beginning to metastasize. And so they had scheduled me a surgery to have my entire colon removed. And Sue Anderson right there, just days before, it was the Sunday before I was supposed to go in and have my surgery, she came up and asked for the microphone, and she invited the church family to commit themselves to the next week to pray and to fast and pray for me. And I went ahead and called the doctor. I said, hey, we need to push this surgery off. Let's see what God's going to do. And, you know, as time went on, I actually... That, that, that surgery was put, put off indefinitely. And now I go every two or three years and, and they, do, they do a test on me to see how things are doing. And each report comes back very positive that God has healed me. It's a miracle, right? So we know that God heals people physically. We could hear stories of how God took broken hearts, your emotional baggage, and you emptied it out before the Lord. And he healed you and he put your life back together again. God is in the healing and miracle working business. Now, uh, I'm not the great physician. He is. We just get people to him. Amen. So the Bible tells us this. Let's put this verse up here where it says that they overcame him. He's talking about Satan, the believers, the saints. That's you. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the what? By the word of their testimony. As we hear these testimonies, what it does is it bolsters faith. It encourages us to believe that God is actually doing these wonderful things. Now, earlier I talked about how Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. And uh, I remember there was this time uh, way back when, when I would pray for people that were sick, maybe they had the crutch or maybe they were in a wheelchair or whatever it was. And I struggled to really pray a faith-filled prayer because I didn't know whether or not I had the gift of healing. I didn't know. And so I kind of held back. I would pray, but I wouldn't see that they were dynamic prayers. But the Lord challenged me. He says, hey, don't worry about that. You got my word, don't you? And I said, yeah, Lord, I've got your word. And he said, how about you do that? You just start praying my word. Whatever, my, whatever the word says, just start speaking that over people. How many of you know God's word is packed with power and authority? Would you agree with me? I'm going to ask if you could stand to your feet with me right now. And I want us to declare what God's word says. And as we read this, I want you to grab hold of this. Grab hold of what his word says. In Mark 16, 17, and 18, read it with me. These signs will accompany those who believe. Pause. Does anybody believe in here? Are there any believers in Jesus Christ in this room? These signs will accompany those who believe. Read it with me. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Amen. What's the significance about laying our hands on people? Church, you carry within you the healing presence of Christ. When we pray, we should believe for miracles because Jesus is alive and his presence is within us. That means you carry his presence, his healing touch, where you go. And so he says one of the ways that we impart Christ who is within us to other people is through the laying on of hands. That when we do that, there's an impartation of Jesus who's in me 
and I'm letting them fl flow through my life and touch your life. Now, let's go ahead and read what he says in James. Let's put this up here. Is anyone among you sick? Okay, we could just ask that question right here, right now. Is there anybody among you who is sick? Anybody? Okay, right here. We got a few of us. Let them call the elders together, elders of the church, to pray over them. And then he says, anoint them with oil. So when we, when we anoint people with oil, I have some right here. This is not magic oil, okay? The point is, is, is that oil is in, the new, in the Bible is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So when we lay hands on somebody and we anoint them with oil, really what we're doing is we're saying, God, get them with your spirit. Lord, touch them with the power of your spirit. He says, uh, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And so this is why we always pray in whose name? In Jesus', Jesus name. Would you say that with me? In Jesus' name. So uh, anoint them with oil. And by the way, you're like, well, I don't always carry oil around with me. That's okay. Open the hood of your car. You can get, get the dipstick out, get some oil. And you're like, well, does it only work if I have oil? Let me tell you something. Jesus is not limited to what's in this bottle. Amen? Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Question mark. How many righteous people are in this room? Okay, did anybody listen to my message last week? Let me pause for a moment. This is the way it works. There's an interesting noise going off here, and I don't know what it is. Is that you? Is that your life alert? Are we okay? Are you doing okay? Okay, so um, I'm going to ask if Charlie, Charlie, can you come and help me? You're over here. Oh, Charlie's running sound. Are you okay, Charlie? You're over here. Okay. The, guys, I'm reviewing last week. Okay. Charlie, this week, you're, Charlie, you're Satan. Over here. <laughs> okay, you're Jesus. Over there. Okay, go ahead. Satan, you can move over a little bit. Okay, last week, we talked about putting, uh, you know, where we're going to put Hitler Hitler was right there. And then we talked about a guy who did really good stuff. You know, you need a thousand points to get to Jesus. Remember the joke where the guy, he's standing before Peter, and he asked, how many points do I need to get in? Peter says, you need a thousand. And uh, so what would you do that was really good? Well, I stayed faithful to my wife 54 years. He got three points for that, right? I served my church, never missed even for Super Bowl. He got another three points. I helped little old ladies across the street. He got another point. And so here was the guy. And Bob, can you be that guy? You're a guy who's done good stuff with his life. Okay? But at your very best, you got seven, but you needed a thousand. So he, th this is why it says all of our righteousness, it's like a filthy rag. I'm going to illustrate for you the miracle of salvation. At the moment, you put your faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross. This is essentially what happens. Jesus is the only one who has the thousand points. And he's got an endless supply of them. And at that moment, you put your faith in Jesus. He says, Bob, we're moving you from seven to a thousand. Because he gives you his thousand. Okay? He gives you his thousand. So at that moment, when you say yes to Christ, you go from being completely spiritually bankrupt to having the fullness of Christ. And so your position moves. You move from this position over to there. Can you move right over there with Christ? Go ahead and take the move. Okay. Okay, listen, guys. This isn't, this isn't what happens... In heaven. Are you guys with me? 
this isn't what happens in heaven. This is what happens instantaneously. The second you say yes to Jesus, you recognize and you believe that his blood was the payment for your sin. And at that moment, you are completely forgiven of everything you've ever done wrong. And he says, you now got my thousand points. You are now positioned with Christ, not in heaven, but right here on earth. So I'm going to ask the question again, because only righteous people get to go to heaven. Are you righteous? Your answer is absolutely, but it's totally and only because of Jesus. Amen. Can we give Jesus applause for that? Bob, you can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Let's take a look what it says in Isaiah. Would you read this with me? By his stripes, we are healed. Now, uh, Bradley noticed, it's like, hey, you, you wore a special shirt just for the verse today. Well, that actually, that was an accident. <laughs> but when, when we talk about by his stripes, we are healed, you guys know the story of at the whipping post. This is before he carried his cross up to uh, Mount Calvary and was impaled to it. It's where he received the, the whipping with the cat of nine tails. And then as those leather strands that had bone and jagged things tied into them, dug into his flesh, and that Roman soldier gave it a pull and it just tore his body. When he said, that wasn't for nothing. By my stripes, you are healed. So often when I pray, I pray that. I say, Lord, your word says, by your stripes, we are healed. In Philippians, would you read this one with me? The name of Jesus is above every name. Would you read that with me? The name of Jesus is above every name. That means his name is above Bob. His name is above Lindy. His name is above Tony, but his name is also above names like cancer. Have you ever considered that? It says his name is over every name. Diabetes. How about coronavirus? Is his name above every name? So this is where the Lord challenged me. He says, don't pray what you think. Don't pray what you feel. Don't worry about whether you have the gift of healing or not. You have the gift of my word. Speak the word because his word is packed with power and authority. And you think, yeah, but I'm a real mess. How could God possibly work through a, a person like me? Can I just tell you that God specializes in working through messed up people? <laughs> Hallelujah for that. Listen to this. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Jacob was a deceiver. Joseph was abused. Moses had a speech impediment. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. I mean... He was really too young. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Jonah ran from God. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied that he even knew Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying for Jesus. The Samaritan woman had been married five times, and the man she was currently living with wasn't even her husband. Paul killed Christians. And yet somehow God worked through flawed people and accomplished amazing things. Would you agree? And so guys like this, man, they give me a lot of hope because I look in the mirror and I know I'm a flawed human being as well. But you know, God specializes in working through flawed people. You know why? Because get, guess who gets all the credit? He does. He does. He gets all the glory. 
He gets all the credit. Let's give the Lord applause for that. So Jesus said this in John. He says, I tell you the truth. The miracles you see me doing, you will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Now let me pause for a moment. What is the significance about Jesus going? If he goes, he will send. What will he send? Or should I say, who will he send? The Holy Spirit. So there in the, in the New Testament, they had Jesus right there. But because he went, he sent. So now we have Jesus in here. Through the person and the presence of of the Holy Spirit. You have the presence of Jesus living in you. Let's give him applause. You carry the healing presence of Jesus everywhere you go. He delegated his ministry to you and to me. Robert, I think that's so beautiful how God worked through you a couple of weeks ago. Because there would have been a time, and maybe even two Sundays ago, where you would have said, I don't think God can work through me like that based on my past. Well, yes, he can. Because at your very best, you were at a seven, and now he's made you a thousand. And you're right there with Jesus. He works through a guy just like you. There's power in the testimony. This is why your story matters. The story about how Jesus got a hold of your heart, a hold of your life. How he healed a broken marriage. How he restored broken relationships. How you were sick, but he raised you. You up. How many of you had the coronavirus? Raise them up really high. And here we are. And here we are. Wow. There's power in the testimony. And just start praying the word. Whatever the word says, just pray that. Okay? Don't worry about whether you have the gifts or healing or not. We got the gift of God's word. Let's pray the word. And this whole idea that somehow God can't use me, get that behind you because if you're flawed, you're exactly who he's looking for. Who here? You either have a sickness, a disease, an infirmity, mental illness, Some kind of thing where you need healed by the Lord. Okay? Lindy, can you come stand with me? All right. I'm going to ask you, okay? (laughs) So I'm going to ask you to tell us what needs to be healed. What is it? My left leg in particular is in pain every day. Um, I pulled a tendon in my right foot ankle and all the limping caused damage in the other side and so um, so you pulled it did you say you pulled a tendon pulled a tendon in this ankle okay and all the limping caused problems on the other side of my body okay so you and you said it was your left left knee my left knee is horrid okay Okay. (laughs) it's horrid it's horrid okay so I'm going to I'm going to pray for Lindy exactly what I've been teaching you today. And so in some respect, this is a a lesson for us where I'm putting into practice, I'm, I'm demonstrating for you exactly what I've been talking about. But we want this to be more than just an object lesson. We do pray, in fact, that the healing presence of Jesus mends this need. 
So this is how I would do that. Kelly's going to put up several verses that we talked about today. In Mark, they will place their hands on the sick. They will be healed. Is anybody among you sick? Anoint them with oil. Pray over them. Okay? Isaiah, by his stripes we are healed. Jesus' name is above every name. Okay? And I don't know if what you have here has a, a specific name to it. I don't know. But uh, we don't always have to try to stretch everything and try to make something out of it. Doctors said it could be arthritis. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do this. And uh, this bottle here is giving me trouble. So I'm going to encourage you to stretch your hands out in this direction, if you could. And so, Lord, I come to my sister, Lindy, and we just simply pray your word, what your word says, that if anyone is sick, and Lord, here she is, she has this, this torn tendon, it may be arthritis, we don't know what it is, but we do what the Bible says, and we anoint her with oil. And so now, Lord, I anoint Lindy with oil, and I lay my hands on her, because your word says that we will lay our hands on the sick. Lord, I want to declare that your word tells me that by your stripes we are healed. And so, Lord, I take what, what happened to you at that whipping post and I apply that right here to Lindy right now. And, Lord, I want to pray and I want to declare that your name is above every name. Your name is above arthritis. You're over that. And so, Lord, I just do what the Bible tells me to do. I lay my hands right now on Lindy's knee, and I declare your name is above arthritis. And, Lord, this torn tendon, by your stripes we are healed. Lord, we pray that you would give Lindy a testimony, a story to tell how this excruciating pain is being healed and transformed by your power. In Jesus' name, the presence of Jesus is here to heal. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lindy. Thank you for your yeah, keep us informed. We want to know. We want to believe that God's going to heal that thing. Okay. Who else here, you have something that you need to be healed of? Can you come and join me right here? And by the way, I'm doing this not to create a spectacle. That's not remotely what this is about. I'm a pastor, and as a pastor, part of my responsibility is to equip the saints, that's you, to equip you for the work of the ministry. So you are seeing what I'm doing. I'm simply praying God's word. And in just a moment, we are going to release you to pray God's word over somebody near you that might need healing. And if you're the one that needs healing, people are just going to pray God's word over you as well. Could you introduce yourself? Right here. Yeah, what is your name? So my name is Zubeida, and you can call me Zu. Yes, and you reminded me, uh, I think you told me last week, you've come recently from where? From Kenya. Kenya, welcome. Thank you. We are so thankful that the Lord brought you right here with us. Thank you. Okay, what do you need from the Lord? So I'm struggling with addiction, okay. marijuana and uh, alcohol, and I can feel the love of God telling me, like, you got this zoo. So I really need some prayers with that. All right. So I'm going to ask if some people in our room, uh, maybe Bradley leading the way, Kyle, anybody else? Anybody who has struggled with addiction just like she confessed that you would come, anoint her with oil, lay hands on her, pray for her, pray that she would be delivered, pray that she would be set free. Father, we love you, and in your word, it says, by your stripes, 
we are healed. The sacrifice that you made, Lord. Um, we just pray for Zhu and everything that she's enduring right now, that that end and that you are the solution, uh, the one true solution, Lord. In the name of Jesus, by his stripes you're healed. Thank you, Lord. Um, Thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing that. And, and one of the ways that we walk in, uh, walk in that freedom that I believe that Jesus is giving to you right now is through the support of shared community, okay? And so I invite you, come Tuesday night, if you can, 7 o'clock right here. It's just people who are in process supporting one another on the journey, Okay. And we want to be able to support you. Can we give the Lord applause for Zoo? Now, I don't know if you have recognized this today, but I am specifically choosing to communicate in a more subdued uh, way to you today. Because there's this idea that sometimes we get, maybe if you've ever tuned into TBN or you've gone to some kind of revival meeting where miracles are happening, that somehow for God to do something, we got to create this elevated passion that is not always indicative of His presence. I'm not saying it's not. But I'm not saying this is not about how ramped up I can get for God to finally show up and do something. In fact, I think sometimes the Lord's just like, could you settle down a little bit? (laughs) Just cool your jets, because this ain't about you. It's about me. And the more flamboyant I become, the less I see him. And I got to tell you, this world needs to see him a whole lot more than they see me. Amen. So when you're praying the word, we're just letting the word be the authority. Just speak the word. Just speak it. Speak it in faith. If you're dealing with sickness, a disease, infirmity, infirmity has to do with maybe a broken bone or something like that. Maybe maybe you're dealing with an infirmity. That's why we have the crutches today. If you're dealing with um, addiction, if you're dealing with Even mental illness, okay? Because we saw Jesus heal people who had some things going on here that needed his touch, and he did it. I suppose before we pray that direction, the first place we should go is ask this. Is there anybody that needs to give their life to the Lord today and have the greatest miracle of salvation, reconciliation with God? Anybody? Anybody need to commit or recommit their lives to the Lord today? Right here? Anybody else? Right back there? This is the greatest miracle of all. People who have broken relationship with God being healed. People who are over here all of a sudden instantaneously being repositioned in Christ. We're going to witness that miracle right now, together. Ladies, could you pray with me? Could you stand? Let this prayer be your prayer. Dear Lord, I say yes to your goodness, to your grace, 
to what you did on the cross, that was for me. Come into my life and fill me with your spirit. Help me live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. If you believe that, if you believe that, you are now saved. You are now forgiven of everything you've ever done. You are covered by his blood, and you have now moved right over there, and you are positioned with Christ. Understand that? Okay, thank you so much. Sickness, disease, infirmity, uh, mental illness, addiction, just stand where you are. Any of those things. All right, stay standing. Uh, Robert, or uh, Bradley, could you, uh, Robert and Bradley and Kyle, could you and maybe get these to a couple other people? Let's just go ahead and do what the Bible says. Let's, let's anoint them with oil. And then... Um, I'm going to give them a quick moment to do that before I invite you guys to move. They got it right there. Yeah. And so if you can move quickly to anoint people. Are we making our rounds? Who else can help me? You need healing? Right there. Okay. Okay. Kyle, go ahead and go get everybody. Okay? All right. All right. <clears throat> So you see uh, the people who are standing. Make sure you got a good look. You see who they are. Have we missed getting anybody anointed? Okay, right back here. All right. So you heard how God healed me of the ulcerative colitis. You heard how God healed Sherry. You heard how God delivered uh, Bradley. You heard some testimony. You heard Jim's story. So the testimony ignites faith. So look around now. And for those of you that are sitting, could you now move and lay a hand on these people? Find somebody around you, near you, and let's make sure we have nobody missed out. All right. Now take a look, everyone. Here's the Bible up here. There's authority in the Word. Are you guys hearing me? The authority is not in what you think. It's not what you feel. That's where the authority's at right there, his word. And so I invite you now as you lay your hands on this person, and you can even say, you can say, Lord, I lay my hands on this person because your word says they will lay their hands on the sick and they will be healed. And now just take a look up here. You can actually pray with your eyes open. That's not a sinful thing to do. And so take a look at what this says, what these scriptures say, and just speak it over those people. Speak God's word now. And I do ask you to speak it audibly, out loud. It doesn't need to be all ramped up and hyperactive, but please testify, declare his written word over them.
Lord, as a, as a church family, we place our hands on the sick because that's what it says to do. We anoint them with oil and we pray. We confess that by your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, that your name is above every sickness. It's above every disease. Your name is above every name. In Jesus' strong and mighty name, everybody said amen. You guys, I know that uh, we've gone a little bit late today. Is this okay? I know some of you, you're like, hey, it's lunchtime, man. <laughs> it's lunchtime. But I would be remiss if I did not ask this question. How many of you, is there anybody here, while we were praying, you felt like you got healed by the Lord today? I felt better today than I did when I walked in here. Lindy, will you say that? So I feel better right now than I did when I walked in the door this morning, and I spent an hour serving breakfast, which usually knocks me out. Yeah. And look at it. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that you'll continue that on. Lord, continue it on in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anybody else here? And Robert, I know you're like me. We both like to talk, so I'm going to ask... Yeah, I right. think mine began last Sunday with what took place, but uh, I'm feeling a freedom from my addiction. Did you hear that? Amen. Hey, Robert, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just real quick. You know, the first song that we sang today, it spoke about breaking the chains. And I've been feeling that calling. We're all called, you know, we're, we're called as ministers of the gospel. And what is our mission? To break those chains off those that are hurting. And that's what I want to begin to do now with my life. Uh, give something back. Thank you for, thank you for uh, saying that because we started out this message by telling everybody, you have been commissioned by Jesus to carry his ministry. Okay, and his ministry is a ministry of breaking chains, breaking shackles off of people. Hallelujah. You guys, as this week continues, we want to pray that these prayers would take effect. Okay, that what the Lord began this morning, anybody feel like he began something, that he will carry it on to completion. Amen. Can we stand? Let's give the Lord an applause together, shall we? Jesus Christ is the healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Church family, as you go, may you go in his peace, in his presence, and in his power. Amen. I love you very much. If you have any prayer needs, we'll be here and available for prayer. God bless you. Bye-bye.